Hello, it's Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers speaking. I'm talking about an interesting book. It's this one here. It looks a bit purple in the cover. It's The Legal Protection of Databases, a Comparative Analysis by Estelle de Clay. In fact, it's a sort of slightly redder colour when you actually look at it, but this is a copy for you, just to see what the book uh, the actual pack shop looks like. I've given the title of this review the words a fair deal for the new data model because this is a deep book. It's an intellectual book and it's one that came out of her thesis. It's been published by Edward Elgar and I think it has a wide ranging appeal for all lawyers, students and those in the public and private sectors who are now covered by the rules concerning all uh, aspects of data usage, which is going to become far more important, of course, as the century unfolds. What Estelle has done here is her aim is to examine and compare the several types of protection available for what she calls the investment in database creation, because there is still no recognised international harmonisation between the major players. Now many of us of course know as professionals or learners that in some jurisdictions there are laws which overprotect database contents whilst in others of course there is underprotection. So what de Clay has set out to do here with her comparative analysis is to include an introduction, ten chapters and a conclusion plus an excellent extensive and detailed bibliography. Um, at the annex, in fact, she, she looks into Directive 96-9-EC, stroke stroke and there's a full index as well. So she's, not, she's actually gone into a lot of detail here, which is to be expected. Um, I went to the conclusion first to see what her uh, thinking was behind all of this. Um, because obviously it was clearly based on her doctoral thesis and I wanted to see what her recommendation is and it's a good one because what she's recommending is this that Europe should revise the directive, the one I've just mentioned and suggest that the US, other countries and WIPO or the WTO adopt the model she sets out in chapter 10 where she declares that the model is a, quote, compromise between American misappropriation and the European sui generis right. And she says is balanced enough and can be enacted. So she's taking a fairly strong line here. I would suggest that it's always good with a book like this um, to have a solution on offer rather than the usual moaning about the problem. Um, because obviously we've got to see how she gets to her conclusion. And so the answer I came up with here is that it's the st structure that's well thought out, which makes the sale, if you like, and it's conveniently structured as an analysis which examines and compares several methods which are now available for the protection of an investment in database creation by means of four types of law. And obviously they're looked at. Uh, that's um, the various um, areas that she's uh, decided to choose for the review. That's intellectual property, unfair competition, contract law, and technological protection measures, or TPMs. Now the evidence, and obviously you always have to have evidence, as you well know with doctoral theses, the evidence for her conclusions comes from the use of criteria based on a combination of the eco uh, economics of information goods, the human rights to human property, always going to be an emotional subject of course, and to information itself and any public interest concerning her proposed model which she sets out, which it is suggested can be adopted both nationally and internationally. But, of course, we always know what the problems could well be with individual member states. Now, the way that the author arrives at her conclusion is to examine the protection of databases within the EU, 
That covers the first part of the book. Then she moves to the US and of direct interest to practitioners it will be chapter 10 on remedies which is very helpful and it, it's part 7 also of the book which covers the relationship between other laws uh, and things like contract TPMs and competition laws so it's well worth looking at. Her penultimate conclusion is that a carefully crafted sui generis intellectual property right is the best solution to protect investment in making databases both at national and international level using the suggested model that she's put forward on a revised directive. You, some of you may think this is pie in the sky but it's at least quite constructive and therefore my conclusion is I see no problem with this once the political will is forthcoming uh, which of course may be some way off. Now Estelle's debate is timely in my view and her methodology sound as we all look for the best methods that uh, this century will give us to allow public and private databases some form of proper consistent legal protection which is now inevitable and long overdue. I've always been a non-regulation man myself but there is a good case here for Estelle de Clay's database protection model and I hope her suggestions are not in vain. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.